Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Apple Tech Talks and for this video, you've probably already guessed by the title, we're going to be talking about the most recently announced Mac Pro versus the 2017 iMac Pro from two years ago. We're going to be dividing this to comparison up into many different parts. So first we're going to start with at a glance. So what are these machines at a first glance? So. For the 2017 iMac Pro, it's a powerful all-in-one computer for graphics-intensive professionals. And with the 2019 Mac Pro, it's a very powerful workstation computer that hooks to a monitor and supports tasks for graphics-intensive professionals. And so next, we're going to look at the cores because that's something that's really important in a very powerful workstation computer and something that's really going to help you achieve a lot of the tasks, graphics-intensive or processing and intensive tasks that you might have as a video professional. With this 2017 iMac Pro, you have eight cores, 10 cores, or 18 cores with the Intel Xeon W processor. And with the 2019 Mac Pro, you have eight, 12, 16, 24, or 28 cores with the same Intel Xeon W processor. So you can already tell there's a lot more options for configurement in terms of the cores for the 2019 Mac Pro. So Apple's trying to give you as much freedom as a creator as possible. So next, let's talk about the RAM or the memory. So this is something that basically allows the computer to manage many tasks at once. And basically, if you know anything about RAM, most phones have about four to eight gigs of RAM at this point. Most laptops will have anywhere from eight gigabytes to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So the 2017 iMac Pro has 32, 64, 128, or 256 gigabytes of RAM, which is just sort of insane once you get into the 100s even. And with the 2019 Mac Pro, you have 32, 48, 96, 192, 384 or 768 gigabytes or an option of 1.5 terabytes of internal RAM. And just think about that for a second. What will that allow you to do? Already 32 gigs, even 64 gigs of RAM, which is just total insanity, is way more than you need in a computer and it will be able to handle most normal and most graphically intense tasks that you throw at it. But just think about plus a thousand plus gigabytes of RAM, 1.5 terabytes. Just imagine how much you can throw at this machine, at this Mac Pro. It will still run so smoothly without any stutters whatsoever. Okay, so next let's move on to storage. So you get options of one, two, or four terabytes of SSD storage with the 2017 iMac Pro. And with the 2019 Mac Pro, you get 256, one, two, or four terabytes of SSD storage. So again, you have, as you can see, a bit more freedom. So if you don't want to get one terabyte of SSD storage, you can get 256 and have the rest of it on an external hard drive. So next, we're gonna talk about the processors. This is probably the core, the CPU. This is the core central processing unit of the computer. This is what does all the work, essentially. So with the processors on the 2017 iMac Pro, you have 3.2 gigahertz, uh, eight core processor, a 3.0 gigahertz 10 core processor, a 2.5 gigahertz 14 core processor, a 2.3 gigahertz 18 core processor, and all of these are with the Intel Xeon W processor that I talked about earlier. So it also is able to do turbo boost up to 4.5 gigahertz, which is, which is just an unheard of, even on most high-end premium desktop computers you don't see this very often and then you also notice that with the more number of cores it's able to handle more and so the processing power the processing speed doesn't need to be as fast and with the 2019 mac pro you have 3.5 gigahertz 8 core 3.3 gigahertz 12 core 3.2 gigahertz 16 core 2.7 gigahertz 24 core 2.5 gigahertz 28 core and this is all, again, with the Intel Xeon W processor I mentioned earlier. And you can turbo boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. The reason why it's a bit less than the iMac Pro is actually this is an advancement because you're actually getting up to 20 plus cores, nearly 30 cores. And just, again, insanity, like I said before. It's just... Why would you even need this in the first place? So let's move on to the graphics because this is another important thing, especially with video editors, you need a lot of intense graphical power. Um, also with gamers, this is something that's very important too. So with the graphics, you have the Radeon Pro Vega 56 chip with eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory. You also have the Radeon Pro Vega 64 uh, chip with 16 gigabytes of the same memory or the same thing with a Radeon Pro Vega 64X chip. And I'm just gonna put on some stats right there just for you stats. 
tech specs lovers. And then with the 2019 Mac Pro, you have slightly different GPUs. So you have one Radeon Pro 580X MPX module with eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory or one or two Radeon Pro Vega 2 MPX modules with 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory each or one or two Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo MPX modules with 64 gigabytes of HBM2 memory each. And again, these numbers are almost like hieroglyphics at this point to me, like I don't even really know what this means. So I'm gonna display some specs for those of you who understand and just know the gist of it for the average consumer out there who's watching. The gist of it is that you can basically throw anything you want at this computer and it's going to do it like a boss. So let's move on to the displays. So the displays on the 2017 iMac Pro, you get a 27 inch 5K display with a resolution of 5120 by 2880 pixels. It also has that P3 wide color gamut that's been implemented into Apple products in the last couple of years. And it basically offers a wider range of colors and also has a 500 nits max brightness. Is that something that's starting to become very standard in a lot of products? And then on the 2019 Mac Pro, as you understand, it's just a workstation computer. It doesn't come with a display. You would have to attach external monitors to it. But Apple does offer its own called the Pro Display XDR, I believe. It comes with standard glass at $5,000 and with nano texture glass, an additional $1,000, making it $6,000. And that's just the starting price before tax and delivery fees, obviously. Um, and that display is a 33 inch 6K display with a resolution of 6016 by 3384 pixels with the same P3 wide color gamut and a max brightness of 500 nits. And it also comes with XDR, which is extreme dynamic range, which is even better than high dynamic range. So it offers even more true to life colors. And next let's move on to the design. The design is very important. Just thinking about how it's built and how it looks to you. So for the user, the 2017 iMac Pro comes with a sleek, thin, the sort of classic iMac design you've known for the past several years since 2012. 27 inch space gray form factor with actually pretty big bezels for 2019. They actually haven't updated the bezel since 2012. But with the Pro Display XDR, Apple redeems themselves. And keep in mind that the iMac Pro was from two years ago. So back then the bezels were more acceptable, I guess. But now the Pro Display XDR is a sleek, thin, 32 inch silver form factor. The back of the display, in my opinion, is more ugly, but it actually makes up for it with the high quality nano texture glass, which like I said before, is an additional thousand dollars. And like I said there again, the resolution is 616 by 3384. And it has very small bezels and an adjustable stand, which comes separate from the device and that's an extra $100. Anyway, let's move on to the I.O. So the I.O. is very important too. This is basically like the ports, the input you can put in on this computer. So with the 2017 iMac Pro, you have four USB 3 ports, three USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 ports, one 10 gigabit ethernet port, and one SD card slot. And then the I.O. on the 2019 Mac Pro includes two USB 3 ports, up to 12, depending on how you configure it, USB-C ports or Thunderbolt 3 ports, two 10 gigabit ethernet ports, eight, or I should say up to eight, PCIe card slots, better performance and faster communication between the input device and the computer than traditional SD card slots. To me, this is just like, freaking amazing, but also like really confusing because I can't see many users needing 12 USB-C ports and eight PCIe card slots unless you're some kind of like ultra professional movie editor, like high quality, big budget Hollywood blockbuster video editor. I don't see you needing that many ports. It's kind of overkill at this point. But then again, it is Apple and Apple wanted to serve the pro consumers and they knew the pro consumers would accept nothing less than complete overkill. So let's move on to the next category, which is unique features because these devices do have their own benefits and disadvantages too. So let's talk about that. So with the 2017 iMac Pro, you have basically 
an all-in-one. And that's what probably its biggest selling point is that it's got an all-in-one, it's got the display, it's got the stand, it's got the keyboard and mouse, it's just got everything, it's got the computer, it's got everything all-in-one. You don't need to buy anything extra and it does so much for you. Uh, even for video professionals out there, video audio professionals, it does everything you want essentially. It also comes with a 1080p FaceTime HD camera, which the 2019 Mac Pro, even with its display, does not. It does come again with that adjustable display in the box itself, although like I said, it's not quite as adjustable as the 2019 Mac Pro, but it still does the job, obviously. It's in space gray, not silver, and you do get the accessories also in space gray, which I think is kind of cool. It also comes with the Hey Siri feature, so you can just say Hey Siri to activate Siri. It also comes with four mics so that you can have FaceTime calls with someone or I guess it's not ideal for actual video recording or anything like that, but it definitely is great for a FaceTime call or Skype call or something. Overall, cheaper. Um, and we're going to talk about this pricing later in this video, but it's a lot cheaper. Now let's move on to the 2019 Mac Pro. So it's a, it has a better display, uh, 32 inches, so it's bigger too, and it's a higher resolution. It has insane processing graphical power that honestly, even though 2017 iMac Pro is insane in its processing graphical power, it just doesn't stack up to the 2019 Mac Pro at all. It also has the modularity, so the, basically the virtual inability to become obsolete. You can swap in and out components of the 2019 Mac Pro just by lifting up the shell that it comes with. It actually has also support for up to eight 4K displays, four 5K displays, or four Pro Display XDRs, depending on the configuration selected. And the displays are sold separately, like I said before. But just think about that. That's incredible. Eight 4K displays. You don't even need 5K. Most people don't even shoot higher than 4K resolution. So just imagine having eight displays in 4K resolution, all simultaneously uh, streaming 4K content or streaming 4K footage that you need to edit. Why would you even need that? And let's talk about also what comes in the box with these guys. So with the 2017 iMac Pro, you have the computer obviously, you have the space gray numeric keypad uh, keyboard and the mouse, Magic Mouse 2. You also have a lightning to USB 3 cable and you have the power cable for the computer obviously. And with the 2019 Mac Pro you have the computer obviously, the Mac Pro itself, the a silver keyboard with numeric pad and mouse, a lightning to USB 3 cable, and the power cable obviously. And then if you get the Pro Display as well, and we'll talk about pricing in a second, you get the Pro Display, a power cord, a Thunderbolt 3 slash USB-C cable, and a polishing cloth, which actually I don't think the 2017 iMac Pro comes with, though I might be wrong. So finally, the point you've been waiting for, let's talk about the prices. So my 2017 iMac Pro review, I was talking about how an up to $17,000 machine seems like something no one would ever buy. And I still stand by that statement today. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And now, you know, with the 2019 Mac Pro costing even more than that, let's discuss that. So first of all, the starting price of the 2017 iMac Pro is $5,000. That's pretty, pretty reasonable in my opinion, although the base model for our products, you almost never want to get that. So even if you configure a couple things, it'll only be about seven dollars to $8,000 max, should be under $10,000. And keep in mind, you're only spending this money if you actually need it for your job. In any other case, I would really not highly recommend against getting it. And then with the 2019 Mac Pro, listen to this. The Mac Pro itself, just the computer, starts at $6,000. So that's just a starting model. If you wanna configure it, let's say it's nine to $10,000, and then you have to get the Pro Display. I suppose you could use another monitor, but honestly, that's a waste of the Mac Pro's potential in most cases. So if you get the, the Pro Display XDR, it'll be $5,000 for the standard glass, or $6,000 for the nanotexture glass. If you get the nanotexture uh, variant, then that $6,000 plus about $10,000, that's $16,000 already out of your pocket. And in addition, you need a $100 stand or as an alternative, a $200 mount adapter. And that's what it looks like. Uh, what? So yeah guys, the verdict of this comparison is that most people, video pros that is, should buy the iMac Pro unless they're looking for monstrous, absolutely beast-like, limitless, powerful, infinitely powerful performance to serve their needs long term, over many, many years, decades even. That's why Apple's made this essentially 
unable to become obsolete because they intend for you as a video professional to use this product for many, many, many years and replace the parts as they become old. Keeping that in mind, first of all, if you're an average consumer, you should not be watching at this point. If you're con seriously considering buying this computer, you are out of your mind. Do not buy it if you're an average consumer. If you're a video professional, get the 2017 iMac Pro unless you fall into the criteria I just mentioned. So my reasoning behind the verdict is that the fundamental difference between these two products will only matter to the consumer if number one, the modularity is something that really matters to you if you really want to have something long term. And number two, the slightly better display that comes with a Pro Display XDR. But then again, you don't need to get the Mac Pro, 2019 Mac Pro, just to use the Pro Display. You can use another workstation computer. You can even use the 20. Well, I wouldn't recommend using the 2013 Mac Pro. I think Apple updated their Mac Mini, or you can use any other computer with that awesome Pro Display, which I think is actually, for what it's worth, priced semi-reasonably. But don't get both the Mac Pro and the Pro Display, plus the mount adapter or slash the adjustable stand for 15, 16, 17 thousand dollars. That is just like, why would you ever do that? And I understand Apple's trying to establish themselves as a luxurious brand and you know this video is about Apple products and I love Apple products I'm not gonna lie you know I just as you've probably seen in this video I have a very hard time understanding who this 2019 Mac Pro is really meant for the only thing I can see is that if you had a company of eight people including yourself and you all use 4k displays and you all were editors and you all were editing footage then I could see that one 2019 Mac Pro powering eight 4k displays at once you can all work from the computer at once but like again there are so many better alternatives than that so other than that there's very little difference between these two products since at this level both products are very capable machines that will both fulfill your needs as a video slash audio editor um, I will have links in the description below if you want to read more about the 2019 Mac Pro read more about the 2017 iMac Pro read more about the Pro Display XDR or buy any of these products. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I definitely enjoyed making this video because, you know, as a YouTuber, it's really important to know these things. I don't mean to hit Apple over the head here. Like, they made a great machine, but like, how Apple, like, like, what was the, what was the thought process here? For the average consumer, do not buy this product. I repeat, do not buy this product. You have been warned. Anyway, guys, Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next week with a really cool video. And as always, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.